Today I'm going to show you something your average researcher, like average mathematician, they might look at this and if they saw it, they might say, hey, you can't do that. I'm going to downvote that immediately. I, I'm kind of worried about that guy if he's saying that he can do these things, right? So um, let's do it. So this is called Look Ma, No Softmax. This notebook explores a novel approach to classification that eliminates the need for gradient-based optimization. Instead of relying on backpropagation and softmax-based probability distributions, we implement a centroid-based self-organizing neural network. This method directly adjusts centroids without computing gradients, no gradient descent, friends, offering an alternative learning paradigm that does not depend on traditional loss functions or gradient descent. No traditional loss function, no gradient descent. Mathematically impossible to some, mathematically impossible to some losers. So key features. No softmax, no backpropagation. The model self-organizes by moving centroids dynamically based on direct comparisons with outputs. Two, centroid-based learning. Instead of computing gradients, centroids shift towards mean feature activations of their respective classes. Three, no traditional loss functions. Learning is driven by geometric proximity to class-based centroids rather than gradient-optimized error minimization. Four, self-organizing behavior. Inspired by Hebbian learning, centroids adapt based on class-based data clustering rather than explicit weight updates. This is an experimental approach that may offer insights into biologically plausible learning mechanisms and alternative optimization. Very straightforward, very simplistically, every single physics experiment that I do on this channel the core basis of it is uh, Wolfram and computation theory. If you can poke holes in Wolfram theory, you you, you kill me. I, I'm done. But uh, you can't, so here we are, and uh, here I am instituting another method of physics utilizing Wolfram's computational theory to showcase the fact that essentially anything that you do has a computational equivalent. That's the bottom line, right? That's how I go through, how do I do these things? How do I pull that off? I, I go through with a different knowledge base than you, flat out. But I, I go through with this assumption up front. Uh, I don't think it's impossible up front. I don't think I'm going to downvote someone just for saying that they can do these things, right? Like That's the most backwards logic I could ever think of. Uh, I go the opposite. And so how do I do that? It's, I start by experimenting with these things and actually doing and, do, and pulling off experiments. So here's my experiment and how I got this, right? So I start off and my experiment ended up being wrong at first. My initial assumption was wrong. And that's very important within this, right? So my initial assumption was that I can create this based off of a surprise function and I can utilize a surprise function. And then if you see one of my more recent videos, K nearest neighbors and K furthest neighbors, that's where I start with this. I figure I can utilize surprise, KNN and KFN. I just combine those things. This would be an easy video. I'll like uh, five minutes, I'll be done, right? And I do it and then uh, I can, I do it and I, I get a loss from it, but this loss is all over the board. Now, this isn't 100% expected what I wanted as far as the outcome, but it's enough to move forward. So I do it and then let me move forward. Let me create essentially the first iteration of this, right? So I create a small small data set. I compute the KNN and KFN distances. I create the surprise calculations uh, to do within this. I create the KNN and the KFN based loss function, incorporate and in essentially uh, Put all of this out, and then the end result is it's showing here 38%. I could run it, it'll vary between 38% and 53%. See, essentially, essentially coin flip accuracy <laughs> with this, but the loss does go down, right? So it starts off at 0 0.0057 and goes down to 0 0.0024 by the end of the run. Um, and then um, it goes down uh, slightly, uh, and, and there is some variation within the, the loss uh, function uh, or loss rate <laughs> within this. Uh, within this first test um, overall, uh, even this, uh, and the loss being, again, that Canon and KFN um, loss. But so this, okay, my first assumption was wrong, like 38% and to 53%, we're not going to get there with this <laughs> flat out, right? So I go back, let me, let me um, go back to the drawing board. Uh, and let me look at more like a, a different approach. So uh, biology, right? Again, computation theory, like I, I, I do this naturally, right? Like, like I, I am like, I'm convinced at this point that computation theory is true. Uh, so I go through and I, you know, okay, there's gotta be an, an, another one. Like I, I just turn the, the lock, the dial a little bit more, right? So let's go biology. Okay, cool. Biology, within biology, I have centroids. So let's try that. So I initialize centroids randomly. I go through, I uh, create custom centroids. I create my custom centroid based optimization. No gradient descent, no gradient descent in here. Uh, and then go through, follow through, 
boom, 71% accuracy. Here we go. So something that uh, math, some mathematicians, some loser mathematicians would tell you is impossible, that they uh, couldn't do themselves. And then so because they can't do it, they're going to tell you it's impossible. Here, I just did the impossible for you. So if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. If you're triggered by this content, please unsubscribe. Thank you very much.